Are single moms really worth going after? Of course not. Hi there, men's dating coach Harry Wilmington here, founder of introvertdatingsuccess.com. And on today's show, we're gonna go over 10 reasons why it is not worth your time to chase after single moms when you're trying to find someone to date. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of when I post up new daily videos. Also, go to the website to check out my free video training, How to Get Attractive, Feminine, Emotionally Stable Women, Dying to Respond to Your First Messages on Dating Apps Without Using Sleazy Pickup Lines, which will give you key secrets to sparking attraction and conversations with women online the smart way. Let's get into it. So I wanted to do this show because there's been a lot of talk online recently about a video that showed up. And there's this guy named, uh, I think his name is Kevin Samuels. And he is a guy that gives all kinds of advice, but especially a lot of dating advice online. And a lot of the advice that he gives is talking to women about being realistic in their choices in dating. And so recently a video went viral because there was a woman he was talking to online. She was middle-aged. She has a 13-year-old son, so she's a single mom. And she wants a guy that makes six figures or higher to date. And so he was trying to break down to her basically that in terms of her market single marketplace value that she is not on the high end of the totem pole that because she is average six figure guys are not going to be looking after her or trying to go for a woman that is of average age of average looks and that has a son and she wasn't really taking this news well and there's been a lot of chatter online about the fact that how dare a man wouldn't go after a single mom and single moms can also be good people too. And he didn't all say that being a single mom was a bad thing. And I want to, for any women that are watching this, I want to say this out, out the gate is that there is nothing that is saying that single moms are bad people or do not deserve love. But in terms of a guy and the amount of time that it's gonna take you guys to be able to find someone diligently to match with, let alone also being an introvert who is already gonna be kind of worry, weary about wanting to give up his time in the first place. If you have two women out there, and let's say both of these women are the exact same age, exact same height, have the similar build, they like the same things, in terms of their temperament, in terms of their emotional stability, they are very much into. Let's say both of these women have these exact same characteristics, they both got great jobs, and they are all about you. One of them is single and has no kids, and the other one is single and has a kid or two. If you have to choose between these two women, with everything being the same except for the kid situation, your time is going to be better spent going after the woman that does not have kids. And I'm going to go into 10 of the reasons why that is. Because again, I don't think single moms are bad people, but you gotta understand that your time is valuable and there's gonna be a lot of things that come with having to date a single mom that you may not want to deal with as an introvert or just as a man in general. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into some of those, okay? Uh, so the first reason that you may not wanna date a single mom is because the kid is going to always come first. Now you might think to yourself, well, how is that a bad thing? And it's simple. The kid's going to come first. Any kind of decision that has to be made about you guys dating is gonna to have to run through the kids. Anytime you wanna go out someplace, you gotta, it's gonna to have to see to it that the kids are able to be watched after first. Anytime that, you know, the you guys have a date plan or whatever, she might be like, oh, wait, I gotta drop the kids off to their baby daddy's house or whatever. So the point is, there's regardless of how much she likes you, the kids are going to always come first. And I tried it where I tried to date a, a couple of women that had kids. And it was always a situation where like, if I wanted to come over, I'd be like, well, I gotta get so-and-so to sleep first. Or, well, I gotta see if, you know, maybe I can get somebody to watch him. Or, you know, oh, I can't do it today because the kid, you know, hurt themselves and I gotta take him to the hospital or whatever. There's always gonna be situations that come up with the kids. And as selfish as this may sound, when you are first starting to date somebody, you really want it to be all about you guys. Like you wanna be able to put her first and you want her to be able to put you first. And if that's not going to be able to happen, it can really affect the type of bond that you're able to have. Now, again, this isn't to say that there aren't guys out there that have successfully been able to date a woman that had kids and it worked out. But even in those situations, the kid is always going to be the first one that comes first. And you may not be ready to handle that with a woman that you're just meeting for the first time, you know, but you jump right in if she already has kids. 
The second reason you may not want to date single moms is because a lot of single moms will portray themselves as a victim of circumstance versus taking responsibility. And I've seen this happen time and time again where women will say things like, well, you know, I'm single because, you know, my my ex boyfriend or ex-husband or their baby daddy was a deadbeat and, you know, I was treated really badly in a relationship and he never really cared after the kids in the first place and yada, yada, yada. And for all you know, she could be telling the truth or she could be saying that to look good in front of you. What you may be missing is the part of the story where she might have been doing some stuff that caused, you know, this other guy to go away, whether she was overbearing or whether maybe she cheated and you don't know about it or whether she just had a bad temperament altogether. Or maybe a lot of times when the kids get here, a woman's emotional state can go from like, you know, one one extreme to the next. And this isn't to include the postpartum stuff, but just kids being here, it changes the dynamic to where a lot of times women will be overprotective of their kids and not trust the guy that they're with to where the guy gets frustrated frustrated and walks off. But the point is, you're not going to know. All you're going to know is her side of the story. And she is very much going to portray herself as a person that was that was done wrong and she was treated unfairly and whatever. And that may not always be the case. So you might not necessarily get the full story of why her and her, her other person that she had a kid with broke up. And that can be something that can be to your detriment if you start dating her. And then as you're dating her, she starts doing things that make you think, oh crap, like this is probably why the, the other guy's not in the picture anymore because she has some issues, okay? So be mindful of that. The third reason why you may wanna stay away from single moms is because a lot of times there is a lot of drama in their life. And a big source of that drama could be the baby daddy. I had a friend that uh, had kids with a guy that she did not get married to, and then they broke up. And he would still come around, but he'd be like all angry and argumentative. And he was very jealous of other guys that she was either trying to date or just friends. Like I was one of her friends that wasn't trying to get with her. And he would still come around and be jealous of me and, you know, all that stuff because he's worried about who's going to be around his son, which to be fair, he has a right to be that way. But I say that to say there's going to be an outside entity outside of you and the woman you're trying to date that is going to interfere. But beyond that kind of drama, understand that a reason a lot of women become single moms is because they didn't choose a mate well or they have emotional stability issues to where the guy didn't want to stay around. Either way, I have found that a lot of women that have kids that are single also have a lot of drama going on in their life, whether it's with their baby daddy, whether it's with their regular family, whether it's with the fact that they might be resentful for having a kid solo, so they're trying to dramatic with the kid. Like there's a lot of emotional stuff that comes into that, that as the new person in the situation, you have no control over. So you have to decide, is that something you want to deal with? On my end of things, I'm like, no, I'm an introvert. I don't want to deal with all this excessive drama. It's too much It's too much stimuli. So I tend to steer away from that. If that's something you think you can handle, more power to you, but it is something you need to consider. The fourth reason to stay away from single moms is, oh, they can be emotionally unstable. And aside from the whole part about being dramatic, part of what adds to that is that they could oftentimes be very untrusting. You know, if they, with a guy that they thought was going to stick around forever and then he bails, now she's going to have trust issues. She's going to have anxiety. She's going to be worried about how you're going to possibly handle her kid. Like I said, a lot of women will, will be very, very like mother bear to their kids to where they don't want other people around their kid to tell the kid what to do or how to act or to even like handle the kid. And so as a result of that, they can end up being very emotionally unstable. Not to say that a woman that's single that doesn't have kids can't also be emotionally unstable, but there is an added element when kids come into the, the picture. And I think a lot of times guys really underestimate how much of a life-changing thing it is when a kid is thrown into the mix. Because kids, kids don't have like the best uh, emotionally emotional stability. They're kids. They're trying to figure out the world. They scream and cry at random things and get scared for no reason. And so that's another thing you got to consider. Do you want to deal with the kids' emotional instability? And that is a lot of emotional stability to have to deal, un, 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 a lot of emotionally unstableness, there we go, to have to deal with coming into the situation as a new person, all right? It's a lot of effort and a lot of energy. And if you're an introvert, you're going to get tired real quick. Uh, the fifth reason to stay away from single moms is uh, there is no spontaneity that's readily available to do, and there's a good chance that you're going to have a lot of dates get canceled. To the spontaneity part of things, realistically, 
if she can't call a babysitter, if she can't get somebody to, to watch the kids, if the kids aren't old enough to be able to watch themselves, then that means that, A, you can't really do a lot of stuff just, you know, spur the moment. And you might think that's not a big deal, but I know me, I like the fact that I can call a girl up and say, hey, my plans got canceled for tonight, so let's go out. Or, hey, this, this thing came up last minute, I think we should go to, let's roll. And I don't have to worry about having to plan something days in advance in hopes that by then she'll have found somebody to take care of the kids, okay? And so as a result of that, yes, a lot of your dates are gonna get canceled. There was one girl I dated one time, we tried to set up like five different dates to actually go out someplace. And the sixth time I called her, she just told me to come over to her place. And when I got there, the kid was there. Like she had like a one-year-old and the kid was just there. And so it's like, I spent half the time sitting there with her and the kid. It was almost like we were, we were more so babysitting than going on a date. But that's because she couldn't go out because she couldn't find a sitter. And a lot of our dates that we planned would get canceled because she could not find somebody to watch the kid. And that is something that's going to happen a lot. Now, if you're a person that thinks, well, I can, I can handle that as what it is, then that's fine. You just have to know that, you know, I typically tell you guys you want to try to see women a minimum of one time a week when you first start dating her. You With single moms, it could be like once every three weeks, once a month. Like you're not going to be able to get that same amount of consistency that you need to really build up a solid foundation of feelings and emotional connection. So be mindful of that if you're trying to go this route. The sixth reason to stay away from single moms is what I say is not your kids, not your rules. And what that means is that you coming into the picture, let's say you get along with the mom and you get to meet the kid, and you get along with the kid. The reality is that is still not your kid. And a lot of moms will feel some kind of way about you trying to set rules with these kids. Because some of these kids, let's be honest, some of these kids, um, if they're with single moms, they're trying to get over on the mom, they're trying to take advantage of her, and so they're going to do things knowing that the mom might not be the, the parent that wants to try to set boundaries or fix their behavior. Uh, I saw, when I was researching this, this uh, particular topic for the show, I saw a article where this guy was talking about how he was hooking up with a mom and she, he came over one night and they were hooking up in the bedroom and the 12 year old all of a sudden walks in on him. And the mom was like, well, he's, he, he, it's, it's cool. Like he, he knows what we're already dating and he needs to be able to see, you know, people being natural and whatever, which is a really, in my head, a really weird thing. But the point is the mom was totally cool with the kid walking in and didn't think treat like a big deal. The dude was freaked out and was like, this dude, this kid needs to get the heck out of here. But he couldn't say that. Why? Because it's not his kid. If the mom is saying it's perfectly fine for him to walk in on us, then who is he to say that, well, that's not a good thing. I don't want that to happen. Like, he's not really in that place to say that because he's not actually the father. He's not actually take this kid's uh, parental. So he, he can't really set those rules. And it's going to be harder for you as a guy coming into the situation to be able to try to set rules and boundaries if the mom's not doing that and if the mom's not going to give you the authority to do so. And a lot of single moms will not give you that authority. The seventh reason you may want to stay away from single moms is because there is a risk that you get attached to the kids and then if you guys break up, you will lose that bond. Because you're not the actual parent and let's say you're just dating a woman, for example, you've been dating her for you know a month, uh, a few months to a year, you might've gotten really close with her kids and bonded and made a connection. Well, when you guys break up, you're not the actual dad. You don't have visitation rights. You don't have the right to connect with them if the mom doesn't want you to. And so you might be a person that gets really, really attached to these kids and really shows them love and affection and truly cares for them. How are you gonna feel when that just up and goes away? She comes to you one day and says, it's not working out, I wanna break up, and I'm out. And now you have these little entities that you've connected to that you can never see again. And that's a hard thing to rip away from. At least, at the very least, if they're your own kids, even if the mom's acting like you know, a complete a-hole and trying to separate you from the kids, you can go to court and fight tooth and nail for your kids, but you can eventually get to see your kids. You can't do that with the woman who has kids and they're not yours and you're just looking after them. The eighth reason to stay away from single moms is because having a casual relationship with one is a lot harder because of the kids. And what I mean by is that this, is that when you first start dating a woman, you may not necessarily know if this is going to go somewhere. So if you're dating a woman that doesn't have kids, for example, you can start off saying, okay, I'm just going to date her casually. And then you won't add so much pressure to the situation. And as it starts to build, you can start to go more towards the direction of, okay, I want to make this more of a serious situation. 
But with single moms, a lot of them, with the, given that they have kids, they're not trying to waste time. So on date one, they're already starting to ask you questions like, well, you know, are you willing to like, you know, do you want to have more kids or do you mind looking up for somebody else's kids? Or like, what's your intentions and whatever? And that can add a lot of added pressure to a situation for a woman that you're just meeting on date number one. You haven't made an actual decision about this person yet, but they're already in that, that mindset of like, whoever I date's got to be okay with this situation because I want this to lead towards a marriage or something serious. And so just having that added pressure can make it seem to you like things are going to move too fast to where you don't really do your due diligence enough to see if this woman beyond just the kids is actually worth staying with. So it's, it's one of those things where you can't just keep it casual and loose because she's already in position where she's already messed up by doing that. And she's already got proof of that with kids here. And so most women that are single moms aren't trying to be casual, which could be to the detriment of you and your guys' relationship and building feelings for each other. The ninth reason to stay away from single moms is because they cost more money to date than women without kids. Now, you may think to yourself, I mean, women are going to cost money regardless. And that's true because when, you, when you're dating a woman that's single, you're going to take her on dates. You're going to you know, pay for gifts occasionally here and there. And it, but the thing is, it doesn't really have to cost a whole lot to date a single woman. Because if you play your cards right, you know the right restaurants to take her to, you know the kind of things to plan that don't cost a whole lot of money, you can legit date a woman that's solo and not spend a whole lot. A woman with kids, all out the window. Because if you're coming into this, part of this to her reads as you are also going to be willing to take on responsibility to this little entity or entities that she has. So if you guys go to a restaurant, well, it's not just you taking her to a restaurant, it's you taking her and however many kids she has as you guys start to progress and date and get deeper. You know, it's going to go from you two just going on dates to you and her and her brood of kids also going on dates. And kids are not uh, inexpensive. They cost money, especially if you get really serious with them. And then it gets to the things where like, you know, for example, kids start having field trips and people and kids start having like, you know, they get hurt and they got to go to the hospital or you got to buy them extra food for anything you do at the house on top of buying your, the woman that you're dating stuff. And so this is not to say that if you don't have the means to do that, that you don't do it if you really care for the woman. But I'm saying again, given the options between two women, being the exact same, but one having kids and one not, you're best to spend your time with somebody that does not have kids because they're going to need less of a monetary investment in you than a woman that has kids. It's just the way it is. And then the 10th reason to stay away from single moms is that they may, surprisingly, a single mom may still look down upon you for being average despite where she is in her life. Now, like I said, in this video, like the video that I was talking about, this woman Single, like I think she was like 35, 13 year old kid, still looking for somebody that makes six figures. So, what that means is that she's not in a place in her life where she has been able to like be above average in terms of her status. And yet, she's looking for an above average guy. And it sucks because you could be a guy that's like making, you know, 60, 70,000 a year. If she's making that same amount of money, a collective household of that would be $140,000. In most places in America, outside of California and New York, but most places in America don't cost a lot. Like we, when I was growing up in Virginia, we lived in a house that was in a very, very expensive, in quotes, neighborhood, and the house total cost like $185,000 for the whole house, okay? And, and, that, and my mom at the time was a single mom, and she was able to handle that. Now, I will say this, because I know I just said my mom was a single mom. And this is why I say single moms aren't necessarily bad people. My mom was single because my dad died when I was nine years old. And so she was single by default, not by choice. So, but a lot of these women are single because they made bad picks, which means they do have this attitude about them. And they also have this mindset of like, well, I made a bad choice once. I'm not going to do it again. I need to get a guy that makes six figures, even though the guy that they had the baby with probably made like less than five figures or less than six figures. Five, less than five years. Yes. So, so yeah. So these women coming to you saying like, oh, you only make how much? Well, oh my God, I said, blah, blah, blah. She's going to still be looking down on you because she's thinking I need a guy that's going to not fun, only fund me, but also fund my entire life and fund my kids. And if they can't do that, then they're out. But that's not your fault that she decided to lay, lay down with some other guy that doesn't have the money to do that. Okay. But the point is you give it the single mom, even if say, let's say she 
accepts you and allows you to date her, okay? She might be still taking digs at you during the relationship talking about you need to get a better job. Why do I make more than you? If she makes more than you, why do I make more than you? You need to man up and, and do something better. And these are not things that you need to hear. And she's saying this because she's thinking there's a rush now to try to get you to make more money to take care of her kids. Versus the woman that is single, she may, with no kids, she may still want you to have a better job, but she can also, she also understands that she can take care of her own. And that again, your combined income, if it's just you two starting out, is more than enough to sustain you guys as you start to build in the hopes of eventually building a family. But for a woman that already has kids, they might be like this, okay? So understand, guy, I'm not trying to dis single moms. I'm not trying to say that they do not deserve love, but I understand that dating a single mom is going to take up a lot of your time, a lot of your energy, a lot of your effort. And you have to really decide, is it worth it? Because you might see a single mom and think, well, she's my only option. But guy, I tell, I'm telling you now, there are so many available, single, never been married, never had a bad relationship situation, women out there that are going to be of a better option for you time-wise, energy-wise, et cetera, than a single mom. If you happen to find one that you gel with, then that's great. Understand, you have to be prepared to deal with some of the things that I talked about in this video. If you can, then great. I'm not one of those guys. And most guys that are watching this are probably thinking they'd probably rather start off with a woman that doesn't have that stuff. And also, I didn't really add this to the list, but the, the, I'll say bonus number 11 is that, face a guy, you probably want kids that are from your lineage if you want to have them. I don't want to have them, so I know it makes, in terms of my journey of dealing with women that have kids, I, I had to cut that off altogether because I was trying to be the guy that's like, I think I can handle it. I can't. I don't want to deal with anybody that has kids. But you have to decide for yourself if you can. But again, most guys want to typically start fresh of a start a fresh family with a woman that doesn't have that excessive baggage. And yes, I know you don't want to hear probably for people that are watching this that are thinking kids aren't baggage. Kids are baggage. Kids take up your time. Kids take up your energy. They're selfish. They don't know how to take care of themselves without possibly killing themselves, which is why they have you to help them out with that. And they cause a lot of distractions and detours and pop up with all kinds of surprises that will take you out of the element of being able to date them. So yeah, they're baggage and they're ultimately not worth trying to be around when you're trying to get to know just a woman herself. So for you guys out there, again, that think you can handle it, more props to you, but really think about if that's something you wanna do. Chances are, it's probably not. Thanks for watching this episode of the Introvert Dating Success Show. If you found the info in this episode to be helpful, please show your support by clicking on the tip jar tab, the link of which can be found at the website and in the description below. While there, you can also download a free copy of my ebook, Texting Like a Boss, where you'll learn the kinds of texts that really attract women. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment on this episode and catch new episodes seven days a week right here on YouTube or wherever podcasts can be found. In the meantime, be sure to check out some other episodes so that you too can learn to date as your introverted self while still getting your precious alone time. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Peace.